So I've gotten quite a few questions on how I did the render for my Dauntless Creature Animation Reel. So I thought I'd show you guys the process for that. And I did all of the render inside of Blender. And it's actually a really simple setup that only takes a few minutes to do. So I'm inside of Blender here and I already have a basic scene set up. I have my geometry, which actually contains the animation. And then I have this basic backdrop here. And I'm not going to show you the process of doing things like actually modeling this background. I'm just going to stick to showing the basic lighting and render setup in order to get similar results that you saw in the creature reel. And for this backdrop, it's just a very simple plane that has been extruded a couple times to create this curved surface. And then we also have the camera animation already set up in our scene. So if we press zero on the number pad, that's going to jump into the camera view. So currently we have this animation in our scene utilizing an Alembic cache. Now all of this animation was first created inside of Maya. And once you're ready to bring your animation outside of Maya, all you would need to do is export it as an Alembic cache. They'll bake all of the animation down to the geometry itself. And then you would just bring in that geometry to your scene. And then what you get is what you see here with this mesh. So we have our scene here. If we go over here to render, and choose render image, you'll notice that we're getting a completely black render, and that's because we have no type of lighting set up in our scene. Now in Blender 2.8, this should already be set up by default, but just in case, go over here to your render settings and just make sure you have your render engine set to cycles, because that's what we're gonna be using to create this render. So we don't have any type of lighting in our scene, so what we're gonna do is go over here to the world properties, and under surface, we're gonna select this drop down and choose background. And you can see we have a color and a strength. So this is going to set up some very basic lighting in our scene. So if we go up here to render image, you'll notice we're already starting to get some very basic lighting. And this is just an overall lighting around our entire scene. So we're getting a very flat type of lighting setup. Now before we add in any more lights, we're gonna make a few adjustments to these values. So over here on color, we're gonna change this to more of a bluish color, and you can really change this to whatever color you want for your scene, or you can keep it completely white if you want this sort of ambient occlusion type of look for your render. So right around here should work, and again, you can either just copy these values or just change it to whatever color you like. And under strength, I'm gonna dial this down to something like 0.5, because we don't want it quite that bright. If you go up here to render and render image, You'll notice that now we're getting an overall bluish tint to our entire image. Again, this is just surrounding our entire scene with this very diffuse blue color to light up our scene. So now that we've done that, let's jump up here to our drop down and go back to the 3D viewport. And what we're going to do now is add in a rectangle object. So we're going to press Shift A, we'll go to Mesh, we'll drop in a plane, press S to scale it up, and we'll drag it up above the geometry. Something about like that, we'll drag it back. And then again, we're just gonna be again scaling it up. So we're just pressing S and then Y to scale it along the Y axis and just something like that. So with the geometry selected, let's go over here to our properties panel. We'll select the material properties. We'll hit new and that will apply a new material to the selected object. And we're gonna change the surface to an emission and the color will be fine. We'll just change this to a strength of 0.7. All right, and then let's press zero to go back into camera view. We'll go to render and choose render image. Now we actually didn't need to jump back into our camera view to render from this camera. If you have your camera selected, what you can do is go down here to view and then choose set active object as camera so that anytime you render, it's going to render from this camera. So already we're getting a nice lighting for our scene. We have this soft light coming from the top of our scene down on to the geometry. Now, we're still getting this sort of overall soft, kind of a dull light and a very flat light for our scene. So we're going to add a couple more lights in our scene to add a little bit more contrast and depth to this render. So again, we'll jump back to our 3D viewport and I'm going to create another rectangle. So I'm just gonna press Shift A, go to Mesh Plane. I'm gonna drag this over all the way to the right side of our scene, pressing S to scale it up and then R and Y to rotate it along the Y axis. Maybe scale it down a little bit. All right, so with that placed, let's go ahead and under our material properties, we'll go to new, we'll add another emission shader to this, but this time we're gonna change the color to a sort of yellowish color. 
just something right around there. And then on strength, we're going to bump this up to a value of 15 because it is pretty far away from our object. So we need to make sure we have enough strength so that we actually see it in the render. So we'll go over here to render. We'll render that image again. So now we're getting a yellowish tinted light coming from the right side of our screen. And we're starting to add just a little bit more depth to this render. And again, you can increase this value, you can change the color if you want, but this is just a good way to quickly start adding some contrast to the lighting. So now let's jump back to our 3D viewport. And what we're gonna do is just press Shift D with this object selected. We're gonna drag it over and place it roughly in a similar position, just on the opposite side. All right, and now what we need to do is adjust the color for this object. However, this object, since we duplicated it, it's using the exact same material as the other object. So if you were to adjust the color, it would adjust the color for both objects, which we don't want. So to fix this, what we're gonna do is with this duplicated object selected, we're gonna go over here to the material and we'll select this drop down, and we're gonna choose copy material. All right, and then we'll hit the plus icon then we'll hit new material. And then with this new material selected, we'll go ahead and hit that same icon and choose paste material. And that's going to paste the exact same values that we had on the copied material. And now all we need to do is adjust the color. So for this, we're gonna go for a bluish color and something around here should work. We'll keep the strength set to a value of 15. And let's go over here to render and we'll choose render image. All right, so with that set, you can see we're starting to get this sort of bluish color appearing on the left side of this render. So again, we're starting to add a bit more contrast, a bit more appeal to the lighting. And if you want to, we can play around with the strength value. We could play around with the color, maybe make it just a little bit more blue if we wanted to. Maybe bump up the strength to something like a value of 17. Run another render just to see how it's looking to see if you want just a bit more of a bluish color from that left side. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to adjust the background color. Now if you want to, you can keep it this default flat white color, but for this we're going to go back to the 3D viewport. I'll select the object for our backdrop, hit new. I'm just going to change this to a basic diffuse material and for the color on this, we're going to go for something more of like a dark blue. So just something like that, and we'll bring the roughness down to a value of zero. And again, if you want to, you can choose a bluish color or just do your own type of color. I'm just going roughly off some of the settings that I use for the actual creature animation reel. Some of these colors are very similar to the ones that I set up for that render. So with that set, let's go up here to render and we'll choose render image. All right, and there we go. So now we have our background as a blue color. We're getting some really nice bounce lighting. So we're seeing more of that bluish color across our entire render. And you can see with that yellow light on the right side, we're getting some nice soft warm lighting to add a bit more depth to this render. And that's really the entire process for setting up the render that you saw in that reel. Now, one thing to point out is that if you look closely at this render, it's actually coming out pretty nicely. We're not getting a lot of noise, which is great. Now, if your render has quite a bit of noise to it, what we can do is go over here to our render settings under the render samples. You can increase this maybe to something like 400, 300 or so. If you want to reduce some of the noise that's coming in with your render. Now, the higher you increase this, the longer the render time will be. Right now, it's taking about 10 seconds per frame on this render. But if we bump it up to 400 and choose render image, you can see the render is going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to reduce some of that noise in the render. So you need to find that balance of enough samples to pretty much eliminate that noise, but you don't wanna to go too overboard where it takes a really long time to render out each frame. So you wanna find that nice balance. So right there, upping the samples to 400, means the render takes about 26 seconds, which still isn't too bad. Now, when you're ready to actually render out your animation, you can jump over here to the output and change how you wanna render this out. If you wanna render it out as a PNG, a JPEG, or even an AVI. And then once you have that set, you go up here to render and render out animation. So that's the very simple setup that I used when rendering out all of the animation for that Dauntless Creature animation reel. Really the longest process 
of that whole reel was basically just bringing the animation inside of Blender and animating the cameras. This actual render setup, once I set it up, I just copied that to all of the other animations so that I could just reuse it. But really the setup only took about five or 10 minutes and you can see you can get really nice results really quickly inside of Blender utilizing cycles.